There we go. Oh, I love the fiddle sound. I'm not the world's greatest fiddler, but I love trying. This was my great granddad's fiddle. His name was George Wagner II. He lived here in Montour County. And uh, if you follow my music, you may know my song about him. He was also a great baseball player. And legend has it, he pitched a win against Christy Matthewson, another Pennsylvanian. Uh, this, is, this was his fiddle. And I am not gonna make a video on how to play fiddle. I'm gonna make a video on how to make fiddle rosin, rosin for your bow. So uh, I have here in front of me a piece of spruce, Norway spruce. I realize Norway spruce is not native, but I find it to be a wonderful tree for the pitch. It gets these huge rosin pockets or resin pockets on the bark. First time I ever did this, I actually went uh, up, up at our hunting camp. There was a place where a black bear had scratched his mark on the side of this Norway spruce. And for years, the tree oozed a whole bunch of sap out and then it, can, it collected. So uh, we went, my sons and I, and we hatcheted off a bunch of that pitch and cooked it over a fire and uh, you know did some experimenting and figured out if you bring it to a boil and filter out all the dirt you have pretty much what you need to make good fiddle rosin or at least good enough for mountain style players like me. I guess you could go to the store and buy fiddle rosin but that doesn't sound as much fun. We're gonna make a fire today and play with axes. Okay, this is a piece of Norway spruce that I cut down recently uh, at a friend's place, actually. The tree had died, and as we were cutting it down, I noticed just a tremendous amount of pitch built up on the trunk. Uh, Norway spruce are famous for this. They get an injury, and they get just a tremendous amount of, of pitch. So um, I have not used other pines to make rosin. I'm sure you can, but really any, any, any real pitchy tree is what you need. And I'm wearing gloves simply because it's so gooey. But see how dirty that is in there? So you got, actually you can see some animal hairs. I see some like squirrel fur in there. So throw it in the pot. I mean, this is, this is an inch thick of, of pitch. This is some stuff I was already cooking. That's why it's brown. But this is what I throw in the pan, some old pan here. And what we're gonna do is put it on a bed of coals. Now it's extremely flammable, so you want to be careful. In fact, I'll let it catch on fire and show it to you. So what we want to do to turn it from pine sap, which is what all that is, to turn that into something we call rosin, you have to heat it up to the point where it boils. And uh, it changes the nature when you heat it up to boiling. And two things are happening when you heat it. One is you're separating it from all that bark and dirt, and it'll drip to the bottom of the pan. But then also, it, it heat, by heating it up and making it boil, it'll change so that when it cools this time, it doesn't cool back into just um, sticky pine pitch. It's going to cool into this hard, uh, hard substance that we call resin. Resin has all kinds of uses. I use it for the fiddle, but I used to be a baseball player, and pitchers often like a, a bag of powdered rosin on the mound to dry their hand and give themselves a little bit of extra stickiness, a little friction on their fingers. I used to be on the high school bowling team here in Danville, and some, some bowlers really like a little bit of rosin to dry their fingers off. I bet there are other uses for it. I'm just not familiar with them. All right, so we'll let this cook a while, and I will show you a trick. When it catches on fire, I take a second pan, and if and when it catches on fire, I try to seal it up, cover up the oxygen, and that'll help prevent it from, from burning. All right, we'll let this cook a bit.
rosin for that. There you saw how easy it is to catch on fire, but that's looking really good. Get this bowl ready. I'm gonna pour it in here first. I uh, just have an old piece of screen thrown on there to try and get out some of the, the junk. pretty good you see how liquid that is that's because it's so hot don't be fooled <laughs> it is uh, it's only liquid while it's hot all right so what I'm making is fiddle rosin so I just took a, a board and on the table saw I ran it through a few times and I made like a trough inside put some masking tape on the end okay one end and then uh, here's my finished product of some rosin I poured earlier and it's, it's in the mid-90s today. It's a hot day. And so if I really push on this, it's, my fingerprint will go in it. It's softish. Uh, but realistically, you should never be storing your fiddle and your fiddle rosin at temperatures in the 90s anyway. Hopefully it's somewhere in your house that's out of the heat. Because uh, once you get this at like room temperature, so it's, it's, it's exactly the consistency you want and you can pull the masking tape off. And then what I do is just cut it on the bandsaw and make uh, little two inch pieces that I can give away to friends. Okay, so I got my little wooden trough that I made on the table saw, and I'm just gonna put some masking tape around the end so that it doesn't flow out the end. And then another trick I've learned is to go long ways on top. because uh, if I spill on top when it's wet, I can just pull that off and end up with a nice clean surface. Whereas if I spill it, it gets kind of gooey and nasty. Okay, so we're ready to pour. Again, you gotta do this while it's hot. Okay, so there's my little wooden trough. There it is looking down that'll start to harden got a little extra in here and if I don't pour that it's gonna turn rock solid in there and there is the final piece so what I did is took it on the bandsaw and sliced it off and you got the finished piece of rosin ready for somebody's fiddle case